I want to ask you if you would help me welcome those at Hillside Fontana watching online in the fireside room. We're, we're so glad that you're with us. Uh, we're, we're in a series called New Traditions and at the best is yet to come. And, and part of what we're trying to do every single week is remind us Christmas, uh, December the 25th is not the goal that we can then say, whoo, made it. It's, it's a reminder, it's a prompt to, to point us to, to something more. So even the Advent season, it is a reminder, it is a celebration that Christ has come, but it's also a reminder that Christ is coming again. And that's what helps shape our lives, that's what helps fill us with hope, that's what begins to give us expectation for, for things that are beyond, they're not yet, but we're being invited into them. There's, there's a commercial in, in this season that has really captured my attention. Now, maybe you're more spiritual than I am and you don't watch TV and that's whatever. Uh, but there's this Duracell commercial that is so interesting. It's the story of two guys. One of them is in the woods being chased by a bear. And he tries to get in his cabin and he has a, a drill that needs batteries that have enough power, extra power, to screw the, the deadbolt into the door so the bear can't get through. The other is, a, is an old man on the beach who's like Mr. T blinged out. You know what I'm talking about? Like he's got, a, what is it called? A metal detector and he's on the beach and he needs a battery strong enough with life, extra life, to last long enough so he can find more treasure. And Duracell asks this question, what is better, extra life or extra power? And the answer to the question is, by Duracell, both because both is better than not both. That's the commercial. Both is better than not both. What's better, extra life, extra power? And I have just been thinking about how true that statement is about the Christmas story that we read in Scripture. Extra life and extra power are ours through Jesus. And both is better than not both. You know what I mean? Because we're in a season where not everybody's excited. For some, this is a season between Thanksgiving and a new year that is filled with anxiety. That memories from the past flood into a season like this, and it's anything but joy. Or there is stress. There is a circumstance that you may face. There's a situation you find yourself in, and it's anything but peace. And how do you go on? And how do you keep focused? And, and where do you find extra strength, extra power in a time like this? Others of us, we're so distracted because we just think the solution would just be a Lexus in the driveway with a red bow on top on Christmas morning. Oh. Or whatever that thing is that promises at least for a temporary moment a little bit of pleasure, but it doesn't last. It doesn't have extra power. It doesn't have extra life. And yet we think maybe, just maybe, give it a shot. And some of us, I can be honest, some of us have thought, I wish I could just hurry up and get through the Christmas season. You know what I mean? You, you don't have to be honest. I'll be honest. I, I've thought that. Can I just get through this? But this isn't something actually that I want to get through. This is something I want to experience that would draw me and point me forward. If you have your Bibles, if you have your smartphone, a tablet, would you turn to Luke chapter 1? We're going to look at, for uh, some of us, a very familiar story. But for others of us, maybe it's unfamiliar. My prayer would be, as we read this, that we could read it with unfamiliar eyes. That maybe we would be able to see things that we've not seen before. Hear things maybe we haven't heard before, maybe God would speak to us in a unique way about this story and the implications it has, not for some time 2,000 years ago, but for right here, right now, that God would apply this to our lives. Luke chapter 1, I will begin reading in verse 28, and this is the gospel of Luke telling the story about how the birth of Jesus came about. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, 
Did you hear what I just said? The angel went to her and said, that's a whole other story. Greetings. Now, I don't know how an angel talks. Greetings. Something like that. I don't know. You who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. See, here's my warning to those of us who know this story really well. We just read it and we're like, yeah, an angel was talking to her. No big deal. No, no, no. An angel was talking to her. Like an, an angel showed up and, and this isn't something that was like an everyday occurrence back then. It was unique. There had been at the end of the Old Testament to the beginning of the New Testament, 400 years of silence where it just didn't seem like God was talking anymore. And all of a sudden an angel is talking. And, and I don't mean like a precious moments figurine that you have on your mantle. And you're like, oh, look, isn't that angel cute? No, he's not cute. Angels in the Bible, when people saw them, they were, they were uh, tempted to bow down and worship. Angels in the Bible, when people encountered them, the people were always afraid. That's why the angels always said, don't be afraid. There was an all kind of inspiring moment. An angel is talking to her. That's crazy, right? And when the angel begins to talk, the angel says, you are a part of a story that's way bigger than you. And the angel says in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, the angel doesn't say, once upon a time, this isn't a fairy tale. This is a historical event. These are real people, real places. There were eyewitnesses all around that knew how this story had happened. And the angel is saying, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Look at the next verse. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and that it was an angel talking to her and wondered what kind of a greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid. See, there it is. Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. <clears throat> you will conceive and give birth to a son and you are to call him Jesus. See, the, as the angel begins to speak to Mary, uh, this isn't one of those blind faith kind of moments. Mary wonders, and it, what it means, that, that word is in the Greek an accounting term. It, it means to give an audit. It, it means she wasn't just recklessly following, uh, throwing abandon and caution to every idea. She's contemplating. She's thinking her mind is engaged intellectually. She's trying to figure out what is going on here. And, and she's listening to the words and she's processing them through what she knows about God and who she knows God to be. But the angel says, for a second time, you have found favor with God. And that's an interesting phrase. And it's one that very often we're confused about. Because as the angel is talking to her, you found favor with God or you're highly favored. We're tempted to believe that there's something supernatural, something so different from Mary than all of us because she's favored. But at the root of that word, to be favored means to be a recipient of God's grace. And as a recipient of God's grace, you don't earn that or it wouldn't be grace. You know what I mean? It wasn't that there was something good about Mary. It was there was something so good about God that he chose her just like he chooses us. And that word grace is a word that is for every one of us and any one of us who would choose to listen and choose to respond and follow God in moments like this. Verse 32, the angel continues to describe who Jesus will be. He will be great. And he will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign. That's what you call extra power. You know what I mean? He will reign over Jacob's descendants. What's the word? Forever. His kingdom will never, what's the word? End. That's what you call extra life. It's both. Because both is better than not both. Remember that? The angel gives this amazing declaration that, that what God is up to is beyond anything that we can accomplish or understand on our own. He will reign forever. His kingdom will never end. It, 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 it has echoes or, or it's echoed in the hallelujah chorus that he shall reign forever and ever. And I remember being a, a, a junior high chorus student and being taught this and singing and he shall reign forever and ever. And as a junior high student, it seemed like we would sing that chorus forever and ever. Like, I'm tired of singing forever and ever. It, it's a long time. 
And the angel is is reminding Mary and us of something phenomenal is happening now. The, The angel mentions David's throne, that he will sit on David's throne because the angel is connecting this moment way back to the Old Testament, King David. Because a Messiah had been prophesied that he would come out of the line and the lineage, like the Ancestry.com, if you will, of David. And so that promise is being fulfilled. The angel goes back even further than that and says, no, no, it's even more than that. It's he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. It's going way back to Jacob in the, the early books of the Bible to talk about Jacob's story and say, no, that's, that's who he is. But even beyond that, Scripture says that Jesus is at the beginning. We'll get there in just a moment. But there's this reminder that because Jesus doesn't do time, The way that I do time. He doesn't calculate, he doesn't measure, he doesn't work just in the temporary like I, like we work in the temporary. He's he's on a whole nother level when it comes to time. Let me give you an example. I I got on my iPhone yesterday and I went to the calendar app and I, I would love for you to do this, not now, but some other time. I got on my calendar app, and here was my question. Like, I've been, uh, for a couple of months now, living in 2020 as much as I live in 2019, making plans, strategy, that kind of thing. I had a thought. I wonder how far my phone goes into the future. And so I did this. I'm not joking. For two minutes, I was scrolling. Oh, my. It just kept going and going. I got to the year 3,150. And I thought, I wonder what's happening September 24th in the year 3,150 on my phone. I'm not joking. That's my birthday. Uh, September the 24th in the year 3,150, I will be celebrating my 1,176th birthday. And I bet I won't look a day over 986 years old because 986 is a new 50 in the year 3,150. And I thought, I can't believe that my phone goes to the year 3,150. That's crazy. I can't even think about what the year 3,150 would be. Well, okay, next level is Jesus is a king, has a kingdom that will never end. He will reign forever. The way that he's looking at your life, our story, it's not based in the moment That you or I live in, whether that moment is filled with pain or whether that moment is filled with celebration, there's more going on than you and I can imagine. And when we begin to see what, what God can be up to, what maybe God is inviting us into, maybe just maybe it changes our perspective in a moment. And maybe just maybe we would realize that every moment has the potential to impact eternity. There's no mundane moments. There's no worthless time. The Apostle Paul tries to help us understand who this Jesus is. In, first, or in, in Colossians chapter 1, verse 15, he says, The Son, Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him... Now, will you do something with me? This word him is repeated a couple of times. Will you say it out loud every time we get to it? So I'll reread verse 16. You ready? For in him. Good. All things were created, things in heaven and things on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. See, if we're not tempted, if if we're not careful, we're tempted to look at our life, and sometimes it looks like a series of disconnected events or mundane moments. Some things matter, other things don't. But but here's what Paul is, is telling us. No, no, no. The story, the history of the world in creation is a story of how God has been faithfully working, how Jesus has been faithfully working. Jesus didn't just show up on the scene in utero for Mary after an angel makes an announcement. He is before all things. And all things have been created through him 
and for him. And he is before all of the things. And in him, they all hold together. Life isn't this series of, of, of disconnected, mundane events that sometimes there's a moment that matters, but the other moments don't matter. No, all of life matters. Your life matters. All of your life matters. And when we live with that kind of anticipation, we see Jesus isn't bound by our kind of time. He is always at work. Connecting things. Anybody know what the next verse in Colossians chapter 1 says? And he, Jesus, is the head of the body, the church. So guess what that is? That's us. So just like there are no disconnected moments, there aren't supposed to be any isolated, individualistic, independent people saying, I'm on my own. We've been created to be connected with each other. Following Jesus, who is the head, but doing our part, understanding we're in this together. We're better together. We're stronger together. Well, what Mary's being invited into is not just about Mary. It's about God's story in this world, and she has a part to play. That's why for us, something like Launch 2020, those of us who call Hillside home, it really matters for us to do our part, for each of us to, to, to step into that role that God is inviting us into. That just like for Mary, there are moments that can mark eternity. There are moments in our lives that mark eternity. 38 years ago, in High Point, North Carolina, at Allen J. Baptist Church, sitting right there on a Sunday night gathering, I remember vividly Pastor Yates M. Brooks. I don't even know, how do I remember his middle initial? Yates M. Brooks was preaching a gospel message. I was six years old, and I don't know who else was in the room. It was as if he was talking to me. And at the end of that message, I stood up and said, I need Jesus. I want to give my life to Jesus. And my eternity changed in that moment. And many of you have similar experiences. Eight years ago, I got a phone call. And, and the phone call was something like, hey, we're from Hillside Community Church. And I'm like, who? And they're like, yeah, we're in Rancho Cucamonga, California. I was like, where? That's not a real place. You made that name up, Right. And they're like, no, 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 it's a real place. We're a real church. And, um, through the, the process of an interview, we felt like God was leading us here. And that was a moment that changed our eternity, that changed our family's eternity, that hopefully changes eternity of a bunch of other people. Some of you, somebody said, can I just talk to you about Jesus for a moment? And it changed your eternity. Some of you said to somebody else, can I just talk to you about Jesus for a minute? And you were a part of seeing their eternity changed. There's these kinds of moments that matter that God works in specific ways. So Mary's in this kind of a moment. The angel has announced, this is what's going to happen you're going to have a baby. He's going to be the Messiah. Extra life, extra power, all that kind of stuff. Verse 34, um, Mary responds, how will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. And I think Mary responded, oh, okay, that makes perfect sense. No, she didn't have all of her questions answered. She wasn't like, I get it. She, she wasn't like, okay, now that all that is answered, I can follow you. She's wrestling. She doesn't fully understand. Uh, she responds gradually, but she didn't let her questions push her away from God. She let her questions draw her into the story of God. And she asked for clarification. How will this be and, and what is it that you're, you're doing? But at the, 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 the core of what's happening here, the angel is giving Mary an invitation to play her part in God's story. An invitation to join in God's work. If this happened in 2020, it would be an Evite invitation. You know what I mean? Like she got an Evite from an angel. 
Anybody, like, you know what I mean, an Evite, right? Like, I got an Evite to our staff Christmas party, and um, I was sick as a dog a couple of weeks ago, and so I couldn't show up, and I'm like, I don't care about the staff Christmas party. I'm miserable in bed. See you later. I got an Evite to a Christmas cookie exchange party, and I said, I don't care. That, nobody's keeping me away from that one. But when you get an Evite invitation, whether you're Mary or whether you're one of us, there's only three potential responses. Yes. Whatever you need. I'm there. I'll show up. Yes. No. No. Can't do it. Not going to do it. Not going to be a part. Maybe. But can we... Can we be really honest? Maybe is probably no. Maybe is probably no. Because maybe there's a plan that I have. Maybe there's a, a better way that I think I have. Maybe the, the cost to be a part or there's a conflict in my schedule. Maybe is probably no. Yet Mary doesn't respond with, I can't do that. I I can't put myself out there like that. I'm not going to be able to do that. She understands what's being asked of her is bigger than her. I wonder about you and I sometimes. Are, are, Are you, am I willing to be inconvenienced for the sake of God? Are you willing, am I willing to be inconvenienced for the sake of someone else? Am am I willing, or are you willing to allow your plans to be interrupted? If you're like, I got a plan, and I'm going this way, and God is like, yeah, but I got a plan, and it's going that way, then if we say, well, maybe, it's probably, no. Or is it, yes, I'll trust you, God? Are are you willing, am, am I willing to be misunderstood for following God? But what Mary is literally wrestling with is her reputation. She's a teenage fiancé who's getting ready to turn up pregnant. She's willing to risk that if that's what it means to follow God. The question implied is this. Mary, will you trust God? The question implied to, to you and I is, will we trust God? Will we take him at his word? So the angel says, this is what's going to happen. The Holy One to be born of you will be called the Son of God. Verse 36, even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. That's extra power. So here's what's interesting. When the angel begins to talk to Mary about what's going on, he makes it very personal, very specific, but he's proving his point by by someone that's close to her. So read the early chapter, the early verses of Luke chapter one. And and what you'll see is there's this priest named Zachariah and he's old. And an angel shows up while he's ministering and says, your wife's going to be pregnant. And he basically laughs in the angel's face. (laughs) You're a funny angel. You know how old I am? And my wife is really old. (laughs) And she's barren, meaning she can't have children. And in that day and age, that was almost a curse. It was a source of deep pain and humiliation. And he's laughing in the face of an angel. When the angel comes to Mary with this audacious move that God is going to do, Here's what the angel says. Hey, you know, Mary, your relative Elizabeth, who is old, like really old? Yeah, I know her. Who is barren and everybody knows it? Yeah, I know her. He's like, Mary, she's pregnant. She's in her sixth month. She's just beginning to show. Then he says this. No word from God will ever fail. So when the angel said those words to Zachariah and Elizabeth, they probably thought, you're crazy, angel. You don't know what you're talking about. And guess what? Six months later, hey, Mary, 
The reason you can take God at his word is the faithfulness of God's word is all around you. No word from God will ever fail. Some of your Bibles translate it this. Nothing is impossible with God. But I love the literal. Like if you just take the Greek language, literally this is what it means. No word shall be without power. No word from God shall be without power. That's what you call extra power, right? Extra power. Jesus says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. Jesus is saying that there's all kinds of things in this world that are temporary, even the world itself, but my word will never pass away. You can take him at his word and you can trust that his word will be true. And so as Mary responds here in verse 38, she doesn't say, now I understand, now it makes sense, now I have it figured out. Look at the simple prayer. I am the Lord's servant. Doesn't mean I have it all figured out. Doesn't mean I have all the answers. It means I trust you. I'm your servant, Mary answered. I love this. May your word to me be fulfilled. And then the angel left her. May your word to me be fulfilled. Fulfilled is to come into existence, to come into a reality. It does speak of extra life and extra power. May your word to me be fulfilled fulfilled. Some of you are like, I'm in a season of life where we're singing songs about joy. People are lighting candles about joy, but I don't have any joy. And yet God's word invites us into the joy of the Lord that's not dependent on your circumstance. So maybe a prayer for you would be, may your word joy be fulfilled in my life today. Some of you would say, there's, there's a season we talk about peace, but I don't have any peace. But yet God's word says he has a peace that transcends all understanding. It means it doesn't make sense. You can't comprehend it. It's a peace that transcends understanding. Maybe your prayer in this season would be, God, may your word, peace, be fulfilled in me now. Maybe it's, you don't feel like you have any strength to face what you have to face. Like family Christmas dinner. I don't have any strength to face. Maybe it's a diagnosis that just happened. Maybe it's fear and uncertainty in a new year. And you're like, I don't have the strength to face it. And yet, God's word says, I can do all this through Christ who gives me strength. That's extra power. Maybe your prayer is, God, may your word, strength, be fulfilled in me. A few years ago, I was sitting at the bedside of someone who was just a few days away from dying. And she said these words, I've never been so weak in my whole life, and yet I've never been so strong. And I just thought, that's extra power. In our weakest moments, in our hardest times, in the the places of frustration and disappointment, that, that we could say, I can do even this. Not because I'm strong, but through Christ who gives me strength. May your word to me be fulfilled. We're invited to extra life. We're invited into salvation. And we're like, maybe, like, I don't know what I can do. And John writes these beautiful words where where he invites us to, to understand the purpose of Scripture. John writes, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. That you don't have to wonder, that you don't have to question, you don't have to doubt. You can know that you have eternal life. And John says, that's why, I, that's why I wrote these words to you. So that you can know, you can have the assurance, you have eternal life. And, and that has a dimension of not just the quantity of your life. Like, will I live to year 3,150? No, it has to do with the quality of our life of our experience of the hope and the joy and the peace that only Jesus can give, the the anticipation that his story isn't finished, he's not done, that we can lean in and trust him no matter what. And we keep talking in this series about the best is yet to come. 
God isn't finished. If you're in the middle of of pain or if you're in the place of you thought, I've arrived, I should be so joyful, and you're not as joyful as you thought, God isn't finished yet. And the story of Christmas isn't just the story of a manger. It's not just the story of angel announcements. That's important. It goes to a cross, but it's not just the story of a cross. It goes to an empty tomb, but it's not just the story of an empty tomb. There is more that God is up to, and we get snapshots. Let me give you a couple. One is in Revelation chapter 1, where John begins to write this beautiful invitation, and John writes these words, Grace and peace to you from him who is... Right now, who was way back then and is to come? It's not just about Christmas that he came. He's coming again. Verse 5, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. That's what you call extra power, right? To him who loves us. And freed us from our sins by his blood. I don't know about you, but a a little bit ago when we got to sing these songs reminding us about the love of God just before we sang, oh, come let us adore him. That's why we adore him, because he loves us and he freed us from our sins by his blood. Amen? Amen? That's good news to remember. But it's not over. He loves us. He has freed us. But look, and has made us. To be a kingdom and priests, and here's the purpose, to serve. To serve his God and Father. To him be glory and power, that's extra power, forever and ever, that's extra life, amen. That's extra power and extra life, because remember, both is better than not both. And it's found in Jesus. And purpose is found to serve to, to use our lives, to live our lives, to take our days and say, what is it, God, that you are inviting us to be a part of? What is the perspective you're inviting us into? Quickly, the very, very last chapter of the entire Bible, Revelation 22, Jesus says, verse 12, look, I am coming soon. And my reward is with me, and I will give to each person according to what they have done. Now, be very careful. That's not talking about salvation, because salvation is by grace. It's a free gift. You can't earn it. That's why it's called grace. This isn't talking about salvation. That happened ahead of time. This is talking about for those of us who have been saved and do have eternal life because of Jesus. Jesus says, I'm coming, and my reward is with me, and I'll give to each person according to what they have done. It's rewards, not salvation, for the life we live after we decided to follow Jesus. Look at the next. I am the Alpha and the Omega. English version is I'm the A to the Z. The first and the last. The beginning and the end. What what Jesus is saying is from creation to revelation. This is a story about me. Jesus. Jesus. The one who holds all things in his hands, including you and me, including all of those events of our life, including all of those things that clamor for our attention. It's all about Jesus. And part of our prayer can be today, may your word, all of it, be fulfilled in our lives. And if you're here and you're a person who's saying, I'm a Christian, I'm following Jesus, I just want to say something that I believe is absolutely true, the quality and the intimacy of your personal relationship with Jesus is directly related to your personal engagement with the words of God. I can't give you, in 35 minutes on a weekend, all that you need to experience extra life and extra power. Jesus And Jesus alone can do that. But he does that through his word. And may your word be fulfilled in our lives so that we can live. But let's make sure it's actually Jesus' words. Because so many times I think we're like, I want your word to be fulfilled in my life. Well, what's the word? Easy. God, I just want life to be easy. May your word be fulfilled in my life. The word easy. And Jesus is like, that's not my word. That's your word. 
I, I just want to be comfortable, God. Will, may your word comfortable be fulfilled in my life. And Jesus is like, that's not my word. That's your word. Make sure it's the right word, the right voice that you're listening to and longing for and, and looking to bring hope and joy and peace so that you don't miss Jesus. See, here's the thing. <clears throat> In this season, we're so busy getting our house ready for Christmas. And I say we very liberally. My wife probably doesn't say we were getting our house ready. You know what I mean? We get our tree ready. We're decorating our tree. Now, don't ask my wife about that one. Did I help out? But I mean we collectively. We're in this together. And we are out there buying presents, getting ready for Christmas. And again, just don't, just leave that one out when you talk to my wife about my role in the shopping. And we're getting food ready because the holidays, we're preparing in all these ways. So how are we preparing our heart to encounter Jesus, to make room, to change our perspective? Not just so after December 25th, whew, well, that was crazy. But so we can say, come, Lord Jesus, we're longing for you to do everything that you desire to do, to fulfill your word in our lives so we don't miss any of it, any of it. For some of us, it may be the power of a personal invitation that maybe someone else's eternity is hanging in the balance. And if you would just pray, give me courage, God. Give me the strength to, to step out of my comfort zone and invite them to church. Maybe those are the words you use and you bring them to church and all you have to do is invite them. I'm the one that's got to give eight sermons. <laughs> and you just do what only you can do. And you invite them. And I'll just do what only I can do in, in sharing the gospel. But here's the good news. And God may do what only God can do. He's the only body who can save anyone. Amen. And that maybe, just maybe, he would allow you and I to be participants in eternity-shaping moments. Or maybe for those of you who call Hillside home, it's launch 2020. This can change eternity for people who don't have the hope of Jesus. Our vision is to see God's hope transform our cities one story at a time. I'm glad I'm one of those stories, aren't you? I'm glad you're one of those stories, but there's more stories and more transformation and we, we need you to be all in. Maybe for some of you, it's we just need new traditions like some of the new traditions, maybe stop. Like, just stop doing some things. Like, maybe make a decision right now. We're not going to talk about the impeachment at Christmas dinner. <laughs> like, there's a new tradition. Maybe we could talk about Jesus, but not the impeachment, please. <laughs> or maybe the new tradition is we just want to be mindful of God's words and saying, let them be fulfilled in our lives, in these moments. God, have your way. Extra life and extra power, they're ours in Jesus. Uh, Charles Haddon Spurgeon, many years ago, wrote these words. If you leave out Christ, you have left the sun out of the day, the moon out of the night. You have left the waters out of the sea. You've left the soul out of the body. You've left joy out of heaven. Yea, you have robbed all of it all. There is no gospel worth thinking of, much less worth proclaiming in God's name if Jesus be forgotten. Let's not forget Jesus. And let's let him shape and mark and transform with extra life and extra power as only he can do. Will you pray with me? God, thank you for your life. And thank you for your power. I pray that for those who really have heavy hearts, lives and circumstances that are marked by worry or grief or fear, that you would bring your peace your comfort. Let them know that you're near. Seasons like this can be so difficult. For others of us, we're distracted by all kinds of things. And all of those distractions, if we're honest, are 
are causing us to forget you. Help us to remember the story, the fullness of the story. Help us to remember your words. May your words be fulfilled in our lives. There's others of us, we don't even know your love. We don't know what it's like to be freed of our sins by your blood. And maybe today for us is an eternity-shaping moment as we turn to you, Jesus. Say, I believe. Please forgive me and you change everything. God, just remind us your story isn't finished. You still are on the move and you're inviting us to join, to participate. Extra life, extra power, they're ours. In your name, Jesus, thank you. And we pray these things. Amen.